Thanks, everybody. Um, <clears throat> now I'm going to welcome up my friend Mike, who uh, is one of the people I was mentioning who uh, refused to go specifically to Afghanistan and decided to go to prison instead. Well, he didn't decide to. <laughs> they, they decided that, but he willingly took the risk. But this is Mike, everybody. Hey, Mike. Uh, can you hear me at the back? Yeah. Sweet. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm Michael Lyons. Uh, 2005, I joined the Navy uh, for two reasons, mainly. Uh, one was economic conscription, and the other was an uh, ad campaign that was running at the time where the protagonist was a Navy medic who got sent out to these humanitarian disasters to give aid and stuff. And that sounded like quite good. Um, so I joined up uh, because of the economic conscription, when you haven't got anything to go back home to, all the bullshit they put you through through training, it's a lot easier to take. Uh, so went through that, and then before you know it, you're in the military bubble, uh, where everyone you know is in the military, the people who you look up to are in the military, and that's kind of where you get some of your very jaded political views or uh, ideas about current affairs at the time. Um, and a few years of that, and then I ended up going to Diego Garcia for five months. Uh, and there I got to see some of the, well, the remnants of the slave trade um, there. Uh, the, the old huts, the old master's houses on that island and on some of the others that we visited. And that was quite a haunting sort of thing to see that. And then to learn about the huge role that the British forces, and in particular the Royal Navy, played in that. Uh, to know that, you know, my counterpart two or three hundred years prior to that was directly involved and sort of made me think about how I'm not just following orders and we're not always the good guys and that you've got to take some responsibility for your actions. And with this newfound sort of thinking for myself type thing, uh, I returned to find a draft order waiting for me to deploy to Afghanistan as a combat medic. Um, and... First, I just thought it was part of my job, blind sense of duty that's been bashed into me from day one. So I just sort of got on with it. And then I the more I thought about it, the more I realised how little I knew about that conflict and the reasons we were over there in the first place. I, I knew plenty of people who'd been out there. They, they were none the wiser. So I started looking into it. And just as I looked into it, um, just out of nowhere, the WikiLeaks explosion happened. Um, and all the truths exposed by Chelsea Manning uh, were there in the Guardian newspaper in a downloadable spreadsheet um, with all the raw data and it just consumed me for weeks uh, just going through all this reading about all these un, uh, unreported casualties and deaths of civilians that we just were every time a soldier died it was you know Sky News had a rolling thing uh, sometimes they'd interview the parents but we never heard about any civilians dying so we kind of just thought well they're probably not they're probably fine um, so this, to have this in in black and white official documentation, really, and then the video as well, the collateral murder video, which uh, the first time I saw it, I, I wept at just the brutality uh, on display. Um, and after lots of debate with family, friends, some on site, some not on site, um, I came to the conclusion that I had to be, declare myself a conscientious objector. Um, and... So I did that, I went through all the paperwork, uh, saw a very angry chaplain who was really into war. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I went through that. They refused me, uh, partly on the grounds of my atheism, uh, partly because if I, a catch-22 type thing, if, if you've got a problem with it and you don't want to go and we let you not go, then everyone will be not wanting to go. And then there'll be no one to go. Um, so in the end, they, they sent me to prison for refusing rifle orders because at the time of all this, they wanted to send me on the most intense weapons course I'd ever been on in the military. And that wasn't really a good time for me. Um, but they, they didn't take no for an answer. So they sent me to Colchester, uh, kicked me out um, for four and a half months, in which uh, I got an amazing amount of support. Um, from not just family and friends, but from quite a few people in this room, I know for sure, and um, people all over the world as well. And that, that was really touching to have that affirmed to you by people you'd never met before. Um, and I would encourage other people, everyone here to look on certain websites uh, like Courage to Resist and find out war resistors. Um, 
people in Canada who have uh, gone AWOL from the American military and uh, send messages of support, poems, songs, pictures, that sort of thing, uh, whatever you can. So, And it's because of that that I was able to leave the military prison with a good positive uh, outlook on life and not just spiral into uh, sort of what a lot of people can do, uh, sort of drugs, alcohol and that sort of thing. But no, it's all good. So thanks for listening and I'll hand you back now to Ryan for more songs.